Somebody excited to be in God's presence this morning? Shout aloud, hallelujah! Shall we lift our hands to heaven again and give glory to God and appreciate Him for this opportunity and blessing to be in His presence this morning? Thanks. I thought you were giving praise to God. I thought you were celebrating Him. Lift your hand, lift your voice and give glory unto God. Lord Jesus, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I celebrate you, Lord. Are you thanking him this morning? Lift your hand, lift your voice and give him praise. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you this morning and we bless your holy name. For this opportunity you have given us to stand in your presence. We thank you Lord for your cloud of glory. That is saturating this place already. We thank you because we know that no one ever encounters you and remains the same. And therefore we are assured that yet again our stories are changing. Changing from glory to glory. From grace to grace. From testimony to testimony. From breakthrough to breakthrough, we bless your holy name. Lord, speak to us this morning. Let your word come with power and let our stories be transformed. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. If that hand is for Jesus, you can make it bigger. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in God's presence. I want to give glory to God this morning for the privilege and the opportunity of standing before you this morning in God's presence. I want to specially congratulate the resident pastor and national pastor here, Pastor Isaac Oedipo, along with the pastoral team and all the leadership here of this great region, all the pastors, all the statutory body members, the Lord Jesus bless you in the name of Jesus this is the beginning of greater things to come it shall be from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord one more time I also want to recognize the presence of our mother in the faith pastor Mrs. Faith Oedipo by privilege my mother in the flesh also hallelujah glory to god this morning we are going to look at this subject that is captioned understanding the power of dedication understanding the power of dedication and this morning, standing upon the shoulders of God's servant, the apostle over this commission, I believe that the grace of God upon his life will be made manifest in each one of us today in Jesus' name. We are here today for the dedication of this sanctuary, but where understanding is absent, engagement is barren. So we must come to the point of understanding on the subject of dedication and this subject is applicable both corporately and personally this morning i like each one of us to position ourselves not just to be part of the dedication of the sanctuary but the dedication of our lives by way of introduction 
let us recognize that every child of God is described as God's building. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9, the word of God declares to us, it says that we are God's building. We are God's building. So every child of God is described as God's building. In verse 16 of the same scripture, we are made to understand that we are God's temple. Not only are we described as God's building, but we are also described as God's temple. In 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, we are further described as the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that means that if truly we are the building of God, we are the temple of God, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then if a believer can truly have his or her life dedicated to God, his life or her life will be filled with the glory of God just like we saw at the dedication of the temple of Solomon. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, it says that after the temple was dedicated and the trumpeters and the singers were as one, and they made one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. He said, when they lifted up their voices and the trumpets and the cymbals and the music began to go forth, suddenly the house was filled with a cloud. I have good news for somebody here this morning. Suddenly today, your life will be filled with a cloud. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. I said, suddenly today, your life will be filled with a cloud. And what is that cloud? It is not the cloud of gloom. It is not the cloud of doom. But it is the cloud of glory. He said in that next verse, he said, For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. And when God's glory comes, reproach goes. When God's glory comes, shame goes. When God's glory comes, defeat goes. Therefore, today, as God's glory comes upon your life, I see an end to shame, an end to reproach, an end to defeat in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Quickly this morning, what is dedication? What is dedication? We have seen that we are the house of God. We have seen that we are the building of God. We have seen that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. But what really is dedication? Let's try to understand the subject of dedication quickly. Dedication is a very vital and important subject. But what is it? Let's understand from scriptures that every believer is described as a spiritual seed. Every believer is described as a spiritual seed. And dedication is simply the process through which the seed of a life is planted in the soil of the kingdom. The seed of a life planted in the soil of the kingdom is what we refer to as dedication. In John chapter 12, verse 23 to 26, Jesus speaking, he said, the hour for the son of man to be glorified has come. But except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. He said, but if it die, it will bring forth much fruit. He that loveth his life will lose it. But he that hated his life shall keep it unto life eternal. Now what is he saying? Verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be. If any man will serve me, him will my father honor. I'd like us to understand this morning that there is 
what I've heard God servant the apostle over this commission called the mystery of the greatest seed. Your greatest seed is not your money. Your greatest seed is not your time. Your greatest seed is not your energy. Your greatest seed are not your, is not your resources. Your greatest seed is your life. That is why God said, my son, give me your heart. What I want is more than your cash. What I want is your heart. My son, give me your heart. One of the issues that we find in our day and our age today is that people want to give God their cash. They want to give God their time. But they don't want to give God their life. But I'd like you to understand that what brings about a change of story is the offering of your greatest seed, which is your life. That is why there is a limit to how far any believer can go without dedication. Believe me, there can be no glorification without dedication. He said, it is time for the son of man to be glorified. But it will not happen except he comes down as a corn of wheat to die. And when he dies, he will bring forth much fruit. Now pay close attention this morning. In the book of Psalm chapter 20, 126 verse 5 and verse 6. The Bible makes a very striking statement. It said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Look at the next verse. He that goeth forth and does what? And does what else? Bearing. Say it louder. Bearing. Say it one more time. Bearing. Is there an S on seeds there? One. He that goeth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. One seed. What is that seed? It's life. What is more precious than a person's life? He that goeth forth and bearing precious seed. No plurality. What we see there is singularity. Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again. When your life is your seed, there is no doubt in your harvest. He that goeth forth and bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again. Rejoicing, bearing his sheaves with him. God is interested in the offering of your life. When your life is planted as a seed in the kingdom earth, that is what dedication is and it is the only pathway to glorification. I pray this morning that as this sanctuary is dedicated, your life also will become dedicated. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. In Mark chapter 4, verse 30 down to verse 33, we are told there, he said that the mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on the earth, he said when it is sown, he said it grows up and then begins to bring forth great branches. It becomes greater than all the herbs of the earth. He says, and shoots out great branches and the birds of the air begin to lodge under the shadow of it. It was insignificant as a seed, but by the process of dedication, it became relevant to all. I'd like you to understand that the pathway from insignificance to relevance is dedication. A seed can be overlooked, but not a tree. When it is in seed form, it can be despised, but not a tree. When you see a seed, you can step a seed, but you don't step a seed. You, you don't step a tree, you climb a tree. In a seed state, it is cheap to damage, but in its tree state, it is difficult to damage. That's what happens when an individual's life 
is planted in the earth of the kingdom. Suddenly, what was insignificant begins to garner relevance. I pray this morning that as your life is dedicated afresh, I see your life begin to manifest divine relevance. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. So every believer is a spiritual seed. But until the seed is dedicated to the soil, it cannot grow and bear fruits or have proofs. So the proofs of our lives are the outcome of the planting of our lives as seeds in the kingdom of God. Please pay attention to this and pay attention to it very closely. I like you to understand that because you have one seed, you can only plant it in one place. Any divided seed is a destroyed seed. Can you take a seed of corn now and divide it to four? Because you want to multiply it and plant it in different places. Not one part of the seed will grow because it has been divided. Why do we as believers want to divide our lives into different pieces and plant it everywhere hoping that it will produce fruit? A divided seed is a damaged seed. You can't have your heart part with God and part of it running after money. You can't have your life part with God and part with sin. Your seed can only be planted in one place. When a man has one seed, it can only be planted in one soil. And the best soil to choose for the planting of your life is the soil of the kingdom. When it is planted in the soil of the kingdom, it is guaranteed to produce supernatural fruits. And that's what God is calling us back to order today. He wants you to know that, listen, it's your seed. It's your choice. But only the right soil will bring the right fruits. How many of you know that not every seed grows well everywhere? Seeds require right condition to produce right manifestation. If your life will produce the right manifestation, you must be planted in the right condition. And that is why the word of God tells us those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the court of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. So God says that the best place for your life to be planted is his house. To be planted in the kingdom. To be dedicated to his cause. That is the simple secret that makes the difference in any individual's life. If you ask God, Bishop David Oedipo, what is the secret to your life? He will tell you simply, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. One seed, one soil, great tree. That is the equation for greatness in the kingdom. One seed, one soil, great tree. It doesn't matter the size of the seed. One seed, one soil, great tree. I'd like you to understand that God is no respecter of persons. If you dedicate your life to him, he glorifies your life for you. I pray again this morning that as this sanctuary is dedicated. May your life become dedicated to him. Amen. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. amen. I said somebody believe it, say loud amen. amen. Furthermore, God's word tells us that every believer is called a seed of Abraham with a destiny of global impact. But until a seed is sown, it has no future. The Bible makes us understand very clearly that you and I, we are the seed of Abraham. But we are also told concerning Abraham in Genesis 22 verse 16 to verse 18, we are told that God said to him, Abraham, in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you, and in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. 
But for you to enjoy the blessing of Abraham, there is a demand. And that demand is a demand of dedication. Abraham was dedicated and the outcome of it was a life of global relevance. Till tomorrow, Abraham remains relevant on the earth. You find the footprints of the blessing of Abraham upon the earth. In fact, God's word tells us when you want to describe blessing, the description is Abraham. He said, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. That is why when God wanted to describe the highest level of blessing available to the believer, in Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14, he said, Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law, being made a cause for you, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangs upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, if you look at the spiritual dictionary and check blessing, the picture you see there is Abraham. Why? Because of dedication. And in John 8, 39, we are told, if you are the seed of Abraham, then do also the works. So global relevance is the product of dedication. Those who are dedicated to their cause are the ones that begin to shine as stars. The moment you settle down with God, he settles your life forever. That is the key. Dedication. So you want to see global relevance? Dedication is the pathway. Furthermore, we are made to understand from the example of Jesus. Jesus was dedicated and the outcome of it was his elevation. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 2, uh, Philippians sorry, chapter 2 verse 5 down to verse 11. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. He said, who? Though it was equal to God, though it thought not robbery to be equal with God, he said he made himself of no, no um, reputation. He says, but he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. He says, and being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself unto, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. And given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow of things in heaven angels of things on earth men of things under the earth demons everything bowed to his authority why because of dedication he was obedient unto death hebrews 12 verse 2 he says now for you and me looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Before you are seated, you must first be planted. He was planted in death and then he was seated in authority. That is why until you are planted in dedication, don't expect to be seated in glorification. Jesus provided for us a pattern to follow. And I pray that this morning, the grace for you and I to follow that pattern effectively. I pray that that grace come afresh upon us. <laughs> now, quickly this morning, what are the benefits of dedication? When a man, when a woman is dedicated to God, committed to God, planted in his kingdom you know sold out to the cause of god what are the effects number one is supernatural breakthrough so me supernatural breakthrough i'd like you to understand that breakthroughs do not need to be prayed for everyone that is dedicated in the kingdom is an automatic candidate for breakthroughs I've watched closely the life of God's servant, Bishop David Oripo, and what I have seen is that there is no effort in praying for advancement of life. There is just supernatural manifestation of breakthrough by dedication. I'd like you to understand that I was telling some of our team, some of our team in Lagos, that even we who are in Canaan land, where the ark is being built, if you are not careful, you won't know anything is happening. If you are not careful, you will not know anything is happening. And it, is ne it has never entered a prayer point in private or public. Hello? 
breaking through without effort. There are things that we are witnessing that it is hard to even know you are witnessing it. Many of you are here now. Some people have just entered this place for the first time. And it has been happening for some time. You were on the earth. You were in the same area. And there has been no pressure. Whoever put under pressure, we are building on, build on. You must build. Bring everything you have. Not once. You think all of this doesn't cost something? It costs plenty things. But hear this. You don't struggle for breakthrough where you are dedicated. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. I have never seen somebody who entered into the forest. And they started hearing noise and asked, what is that? And they said, the tree is growing. Have you heard that before? He said, what is happening? The tree is growing. No. The tree does not struggle to grow as long as it is planted. Breakthrough is not by struggle. It is by dedication. So many people are trying to break through and they are breaking down. It is not by struggle. It is by dedication. The moment you get your life dedicated to God, breakthrough becomes a natural outcome. I pray for somebody here this morning. As your life becomes dedicated, breakthrough shall become your new identity. Somebody believe you say a loud amen. I said as your life becomes dedicated, breakthrough shall become your natural identity. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 3 down to verse 7. Let's look at this quickly. Ezekiel 31. It says, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with, a, with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and with an high stature. And his top was among the thick boughs. And the waters made him great. The deep get, get him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants. And set out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Look at it. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. And his balls were multiplied. And his branches became long because of the multitude of the waters when he shot forth. All of the fowls of heaven made their nest in his balls. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And under his shadow dwelt all the great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness. In the land of his branches. Because his root was by great waters. He went above all the trees not by struggle. He went above all the trees not by effort. But because he was planted by the waters. And somebody says, what are those waters? Ezekiel chapter 47 tells us, beginning from verse 1 all the way down to verse 5. He says, look at this closely. Ezekiel 47, beginning from verse 1 to 5. He brought me again to the door of the house. And behold, they issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood towards the east. And the waters came down from the right side of the house. At the south side of the altar. That's the house of God. He says, they brought me out. And took me towards the water and brought me through. And measured a thousand cubits. The waters were flowing from the house of God. So those who are planted in the house are planted by the waters. And those who are planted by the waters will shoot forth great branches. Is somebody getting it now? So your dedication in the house of God determines your glorification in your world. Your dedication. 
your dedication. That is why it is important for us to understand that if you are going to experience the kind of breakthrough God has ordained for us, it can only take place when you are planted. So one of the, out, one of the outflows of our commitment to God is simply supernatural breakthrough. I pray for somebody again this morning that as you settle down and get dedicated in his house, I see supernatural breakthrough becoming your identity. Somebody believe you say loud amen. I said somebody believe you say loud amen. What else? Number two, supernatural favor. Supernatural what? Supernatural favor. And I tell you of all of the forces in the kingdom and spiritual virtues in the kingdom, favor is one of my favorite. You don't like favor? I like favor. Favor is so unique. When a man is favored, he has an unfair advantage. Favor is not fair. But favor is also not free. Favor is not fair. The Bible says concerning Daniel, it said that Daniel was preferred. It's not that there were no choices, but he was favored. And when a man carries favor, he has an unfair advantage. Here, this favor does not mean that everybody likes you. That is man pleasing. Favor means those who need to like you, like you while they need to like you. When a man is favored, individuals are attracted to them while they require them. Hello? That is what favor refers to. And the Bible makes us understand very clearly in Psalm 102 verse 13 to 15. It said, thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time is come. What made it the set time? He said, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and they favor the dust. As a result of that, verse 15, he said, the hidden shall fear the name of the Lord and the kings of the earth, thy glory, fearful favor. How does it come? By taking pleasure in the stones of Zion. As you keep yourself active, running after the lost, Running after the affairs of the kingdom. Favor keeps running after you. Is somebody getting it now? I heard God's servant say, he said, all the great people he has met in the world, there is no one that he went to introduce himself to. No. No one. He said, somebody say, hey, so how did they know you? How did you know them? He said, ask them how they know me. That's what happens when favor comes. When favor comes, you don't need to distribute your complimentary card everywhere. When favor arrives, you don't need to attend every networking event. You are a natural network. Is somebody getting it? You just find things working themselves towards you. For somebody today, I see the favor of God locating you. Somebody believe you say a loud amen. I said, I see the favor of God locating you. In Psalm chapter 44 verse 3, he said, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. He said, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. When favor comes, sweat goes. When favor comes, sweat goes. For somebody here today, I see the sweat of your life coming to an end. And then number three. Number three benefit of dedication. Is supernatural honor. Supernatural what? Honor. We saw it earlier in John chapter 12 verse, 20, verse 23 to 26. It said there. Except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abides alone. But if it dies. It will bring forth much fruit. And verse 26 says. Anyone that serves me after this pattern, him will my father honor. Honor talks about regard. Honor talks about respect. 
honor talks about position. A man that is dedicated to God does not struggle for respect. He does not struggle for regard. He does not struggle for position. Positions find him. Hello? Joseph did not manipulate his way in the house of Potiphar. Position found him. In the prison, he did not negotiate his way with the prison keeper. Position found him. Before Pharaoh, he did not need to talk his way into favor, to, to the favor of, of, of Pharaoh. Position found him. In fact, Pharaoh said, according to your own word, will all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis 45 and verse 8, he said, God has made me a father to Pharaoh. Can you imagine? Everything was surrendered to Joseph. And in case people thought it was a joke, when there was famine in the land and they came to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, go and meet Joseph. The answer is not with me. It is with him. He became a man of position because of the honor of God that rested upon him. There are people hearing me this morning that the positions you cannot presently imagine, God will lead you there. It will not be by negotiation. It will not be by manipulation. It will not be by, by any kind of persuasion. But God will take you there. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, number four, benefit of dedication is global impact. What did I call it? Global impact. Global impact. Global impact. From the example of Abraham, he was a man of global impact. How? By dedication. From the example of Jesus, he has become an entity of global impact. How? By dedication. From your own story, you become a personality of global impact. You believe it, say louder, amen. I said you shall become a personality of global impact. Obadiah verse 21 says, Savior shall arise out of Mount Zion. I believe this morning that there are people hearing me this morning. Nobody may recognize you now, but very soon you will shake your word. You believe it, say louder, amen. I said very shortly you will shake your word. What God is saying to you and me simply is this. In order to be enlisted among the high flyers in these last days, we must become dedicated to God and to his kingdom. Become dedicated to God and to his kingdom. Every opportunity you have, stand on the altar of prayer. Pray in kingdom advancement prayers. Get out there on the harvest field, advancing the kingdom of God. It may look like mockery now, but watch out. The conclusion of it will always be glory. There is no one that dedicates his insignificant life to God that does not rise up in global relevance. Very shortly from now, your testimony will shake your world. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. Lift your hand to heaven this morning and give glory to God. Appreciate him from the depth of your heart for his word that has come your way this morning. Give him thanks. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, wherever you are, you are not yet born again. You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. Please hear this. God wants to beautify you wants to decorate you but he cannot do it until you belong to him hear this and hear it very well this morning the choice to belong to God is voluntary he will never force you it is your choice he said I put before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life this morning, wherever you are, you want to surrender to Jesus. You want to become a child of God. You want to have your own name registered in the book of life. Wherever you are, quickly rise on your feet. I want to pray with you right now. Quickly, on your feet, wherever you are. You want to surrender to Jesus, on your feet. 
God bless you. On your feet. God bless you. On your feet. God bless you. Also, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Inside you, you know something is wrong. You have divided your life into many parts. And no part of the seed is growing. In fact, your heart has grown cold. You know inside of you that you need to make it right with God. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Wherever you are right now, quickly rise on your feet also. All over this place, God bless you. Quickly, on your feet right now. On your feet right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you have done that in response to the first or the second call, begin to make your way forward quickly to the altar. I want to pray with you right now. I want to pray with you right now. It's not too late. It's not too late. Quickly, make your way forward. Are you clapping for Jesus as they come? Make that hand bigger as they come. Thank you, Jesus. Please come forward, come closer towards the altar. If you are still coming, rush forward and join us. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, for all of us in front, please lift up your right hand and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Loud and clear, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you, no turning back. I will serve you, no turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for these precious ones. They have responded to your call. And I ask that you grant them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives. And never turn back. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Congratulations, it's a new day. Please just follow the kingdom friend right here. They will guide you. Make that hand bigger for Jesus is worthy. If you are clapping for Jesus, make it bigger. Make it louder. Thank you, Jesus. In a moment, the sanctuary is going to be dedicated. That's the purpose for which we are here. But let's quickly examine why we are dedicating this sanctuary today. And pay attention, I want to say just three things in particular before the sanctuary is dedicated. Why are we dedicating this sanctuary today? Number one is in recognition of God as the builder. No man can build. What we see today is the hand of God. Psalm 127 verse 1, except the Lord build the house, the laborer labors in vain. We are told, he said, every house is built by some man, but the builder of all things is God. I tell you something, the only way we are standing in this place today on the 24th of October is the hand of God. So what are we saying as we dedicate? We are recognizing the builder. We are recognizing who? Thank God for the input of others, but input will not talk to impact without God. God is the builder. Will you lift your hand to say thank you, Jesus? Number two reason why we are dedicating this place is to hand over the facility to Christ who is the head of the church. This church is not Bishop Oedipo's church. This church is not Pastor Isaac Oedipo's church. This church is the church of Jesus. And what we are doing today is to take it. Lord, you built it. We are sitting in it. We are handing it back to you. To return it back to him and the third thing we are here to do is to secure God's presence in this sanctuary perpetually 
He said, this is Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So we are here to have this facility in, you know, saturated by his presence. And I believe God that this morning as this place is anointed and dedicated, God's presence will take over. Anyone that steps into this place will be touched by God. Amen. Now hear this, after today, even without services, miracles will be happening here. Amen. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. amen. Those are the three reasons we are here today. Therefore, in the moment, I'm going to ask for every one of us to stand on our feet. We're going to invite our mother in the faith, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oedipo, who will take us further as this place is dedicated unto the Lord. Will you rise on your feet with me right now? And give Jesus a big hand of praise as we invite our mother and the faith to lead us in this dedication procession. Make that hand bigger for Jesus. Let somebody shout a louder hallelujah. hallelujah. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. The glory must be to the Lord. Lift up your hands and sing aloud. For the glory must be to the Lord. Let God hear your voice right now. up your voice and glorify his name. He's worthy. He's faithful. Thank him. Praise him. Bless him. Give him all the glory. Let him hear your voice. You have received his word. God has blessed you today. Therefore, glorify his name for this sanctuary dedication today. Father, we thank you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Let your amen be the loudest. Right now, the sanctuary of the Lord is going to be dedicated. And as this takes place, I'd like you to believe God that your own life today, your own life as an individual, you have heard God's word, your own life as the seed, not seeds, as the seed shall be rededicated to God Almighty. Therefore, your own shining is just beginning. Can I hear you louder? Amen. Please, someone to read for us. Take your seat one moment. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 9. Let's have it on the screen. 
And everybody, let's read it together. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 9. Ready? One, two, go. They shall become holy. That's what we're about to do right now. I'm sure that all the men of God that are going to various uh, locations, they are aware of where they're supposed to be going. Right now, this oil is hereby declared blessed. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This oil is blessed today and declare the anointing oil as the various locations are going to be anointed they are separated unto god yes. 